Jenna, and we're talking about type 2 diabetes. Our age group are 13 and 19 year olds, and we chose that because it's becoming a lot more prevalent in this age group, and also there's not enough awareness going on. The teaching strategies that we chose were discussion and audiovisual because those keep in line with how teenagers learn in school, and we didn't want to teach them a new learning strategy as well as new information. So adolescents are in the Piaget's theory of cognitive development for formal operations and they have an increased introspection during this time so they start asking themselves who am I, what entails my future, um, and they also have an intolerance for what things are. So they have a hard time conceptualizing what is actually the case and they often struggle with this so we chose to use peer-to-peer -peer interactions because they use this and um, being able to bounce ideas off and learn. Thank you for watching. Due to the developmental status of the age group that we selected, they are able to take in new information through cognitive learning and effective learning. We decided that discussion and audiovisual were the most ma appropriate for our subject matter and age group. Since 19 through 18 years of age learn at school through audiovisual with PowerPoints and videos and through discussion in class, we thought that would be the most appropriate without losing their attention. Jamie! Oh my gosh! Did you hear this totally awful thing about my grandma? She had to get her foot cut off because she has diabetes. I think it's type 2. Oh my goodness, that's it is so scary. Do you think I can like catch it from her by like hugging her or touching her? I don't think you can catch it. Is it like genetic? You know, my mom's a nurse. Let's go talk to her. Okay. Hi, Rose. <sighs> we have some questions about diabetes. Sure, hon. What's going on? Well, Amy's grandma's foot just got amputated and we were wondering if that's genetic. Can can she have that too? Did your grandma have diabetes as a kid? Um, no. She like got it after my uncle Bob graduated college. She was pretty old. I think like 45. Okay, so this is type 2 diabetes, which means it's not genetic. But you can still develop diabetes if you don't take care of yourself. Not all cases of diabetes lead to amputation, but it is a really hard disease to manage and control because it affects so many parts of your body. So I like won't 100% have to like get my foot amputated? No, as long as it's well managed, that doesn't always happen. However, with diabetes, sometimes sores on the feet get so severe that um, amputation is the only option because there's no other treatment for it. However, the more you do to prevent diabetes now, the less likely you'll get it in the future. So what can we do? The first thing you want to do is eat a well-balanced diet. I eat like a lot of fast food, you know, McDonald's, Jack in the Box. It's right down the street, so it's so easy to get to. Is that okay? Well, you want to try and eat kid-sized meals instead of supersized and water instead of soda if you do decide to eat fast food, even though it's not the best option. It would be better to eat whole grains, lots of fruits and veggies, and smaller portions. We normally eat Wonder Bread, which is like the white bread that like sticks to the roof of your mouth so good. Is that whole grain? Um, no. That would be considered white bread. Whole grains are oatmeal, brown rice, and darker colored breads are a good indication of whole grains. After school, I really like to eat like candy bars, Twix are my favorite, or like a bag of chips, you know, Cheetos, Lay's, whatever. Um, is that a good option? Maybe choose a piece of fruit or baked chips instead if you do decide to go that route. And always stick to smaller portions. Wait, so does this mean we can't have dessert? No, dessert isn't bad, but you should limit your sugar intake as much as possible. I like to eat a bowl of fruit for dessert instead of ice cream or cake. Dessert is okay in moderation, but not with every meal. Man, this sounds so difficult. Like, how are we always going to keep up with this? We eat all that stuff. Try talking to your parents to see if they will support you in eating healthier. And make sure you surround yourself with friends who understand that you want to eat healthier. 
It also makes it a lot easier on you if you have your mom buy healthy foods so that you don't break down in times of temptation. So eating a bag of nuts instead of chips would be better? Um, so like if I made myself a sandwich with whole grain bread for lunch to bring to school instead of eating their fried chicken? Yeah, that's great. You also want to make sure that you stay active. What kind of exercise is best? Anything that keeps your heart rate up for a longer amount of time is great. I jog every once in a while, you know, like a couple times a week when I have time. Um, is that okay? Yeah, Amy, that's awesome. But how does that prevent diabetes? It helps to decrease fasting glucose levels and increase the body's response to insulin. Like, how does that prevent me from having to get my foot cut off? Well, type 2 diabetes is the inadequate production or absorption of insulin. Insulin helps with the uptake of glucose from the blood into the cells. The higher amounts of glucose in the blood is called hyperglycemia, and that's pretty common with people who have diabetes. Oh, okay, now I understand. Yeah. Exercise is also helpful to maintain a healthy weight. Being overweight or obese can also increase your risk of getting diabetes. Oh my gosh, Jamie's mom, thank you so much for taking the time to sit with us and like help explain this. This has really helped yeah. and I think we can better prevent type 2 diabetes. Thanks mom. Yeah.